Hey guys, this is Ash with Harry's Army Surplus. Plus. Today we're talking about bug out bags. And if you haven't heard of what a bug out bag is, let me tell you. A bug out bag is a bag that allows you to get out of wherever you are as quickly as possible and have enough supplies to be okay for a couple of days. In this video, I'll talk about a lot of the things that go in a bug out bag. Not necessarily everything, but most things. And all the things in this video can be found on our website, which is linked below. For the sake of simplicity, I've broken the contents down into categories. And those categories are food and food prep, water and hydration, clothing, shelter and bedding, heat source, first aid, hygiene, tools, communications, and miscellaneous. Oh good, I had enough fingers, I was worried about that. Starting things off with water and hydration, you'll need something to drink out of, and I usually recommend a metal canteen. Not a plastic one, a metal one. Why? Because you can cook in it, and plastic doesn't really like being heated over a stove too much, so yeah, metal. Metal is good. You'll also be needing some water purification tablets, which can be found in store and on the website. You see, folks, fresh water may be fresh water, but it's not, like, fresh water. You know, there's a lot of stuff in it you don't know anything about, so you got to purify it with these tablets or another form of water purification. Moving on to food and food prep, there's a couple things you need to know. One, you can't carry every piece of food you could ever want in your pack, because that just doesn't make sense. What you can pack is MREs, or Meals Ready to Eat. The military uses them, and they have an extra long shelf life, so if you don't need to bug out right away, you can still have the food packed in the bag ready to go. So that's fantastic, and we'll be doing a video soon about how to cook one of those. A metal mess kit would also be advisable in addition to cutlery, your portable stove, and fuel tablets for said stove. Hey Ash, why is all this stuff still in packages? Well, because there's a lot of items to go through today, and if I unboxed every single one of those and then had to rebox it, that would take, I don't even know how much time, but a lot, just, just a lot of time. So we're gonna keep it in the boxes for now, and keep in mind that when you put it in your bug out bag, it will all be a lot smaller. All right, so for clothing, some of the stuff you'd expect, some of the stuff you would not expect, let's dive right in with socks. These are merino wool socks from Wigwam, and they are real wool. Why did I clarify that? Because a lot of times people that sell wool socks they like to call them wool socks, but they're not. They're cotton that's been fluffed up, and that will create more bacteria and, and trap your oils and stuff in your boot. You don't want that. That's just a very, very bad thing. So make sure you always ask who you're buying from, whether or not they're actually wool, because you never know. But these are. These are made in America and have a lifetime guarantee. So if you destroy your socks or they're taken away by a bear or what have you, you can just get some more. For pants, I recommend True Spec Tactical Pants. The Ascensions are my favorite, as you may already know if you've talked to me in the store or seen one of my previous videos where I've talked about said pants. They are lightweight and breathable, lots and lots of pockets for all your tools, and they're water resistant, which is fantastic. You'll definitely want to have that. You also want a couple of t-shirts, a long sleeve t-shirt of some kind, and a poncho. Look how small that is, it's adorable. It doesn't have to take all that much space up in your bag. You can get thicker ones if you want, doesn't matter, as long as you have one. Who likes blisters? Not you? Oh, just like everybody else. Get some work gloves and that won't be a problem. It's also important to have a hat just like this one here and some kind of scarfy sort of thing. A shemag is a great option. These are pretty popular. They come in a lot of different colors and styles. I think this one's my favorite though. Look at that, I just unfolded it and you have the don't tread on me snake in there. That's fantastic. Shelter and bedding. We'll kick things off with the tent. Not as big as you thought, is it? And this is a two-person tent. You can actually get one-person tents on our website as well. Either one of them will be fine for a bug out bag, depending on how many people you plan to bug out with the one bag. Moving on, bedding. This is a sleeping mat, self-inflating. A lot of people choose to roll these up with the sleeping bag, and that way they only have the one thing to strap to the bag. A lot of tents have a tarp built into the bottom. A lot of tents don't have a tarp built into the bottom. So just in case, it's best to have a tarp with you to prevent water from entering the tent. That's not where the water goes. In the event your shelter is destroyed, you now have a second shelter option if you combine this with the paracord. Heat sources. Okay, so you may be thinking, oh, just lighter, right? No, nope, not lighter. Because the butane in that lighter is gonna run out a lot faster than you think it will. So you wanna go back to the original elemental ways of starting fire. You got flint and steel here, that's gonna last you a very, very long time. Another excellent heat source is waterproof or stormproof matches. Now, why are they stormproof? Well, because typically, the part that you can strike, they put a lot more of those chemicals on the stick, which allows it to stand up to wind and rain and everything like that. And you can use 
those matches to light your survival candle. Now the survival candle is cool because if you light just one wick, it can last up to 36 hours. First aid is pretty straightforward. I mean, they come in kits. Here's one. I'll go over a first aid kit in another video. There's quite a lot in here. Anything you might need to patch up a wound, save for maybe losing an arm or something. Try not to lose an arm, guys, because you're not really gonna be able to handle that so well in these scenarios. So you got your first aid kit. Emergency blankets are also fantastic to keep around. They seem thin and lightweight and everything, but the whole point is that it reflects your body heat back onto you, so it's a lot warmer than you might think. Very important to have. Hygiene time. You're all familiar with your travel size soaps and toothpastes and toothbrushes and all that kind of stuff. That's all well and good. But what you may not have thought about is your towel. So that's where travel size towels come in handy. These specific ones are 49 by 47 inches, are very absorbent and quick drying and pack away very, very small. Hand sanitizer and antibacterial wipes are also important to have. These ones are actually biodegradable, which is very convenient, but that doesn't mean throw them on the ground. That means if you do it by accident, nobody's going to die. All right, it's time for my favorite part. It's tool time. We'll start things off with an end of the world classic. We have our machete here. This one's from Colombian Survival. It is sawback. I always recommend sawback ones, so you have that extra full-size tool. Very, very sharp. Make sure you have one with a sturdy sheath as well. You wouldn't want to be walking along and then have it uh, pop out and cut you. I'm not a space to put stuff around here. Here's our hatchet. Hatchets are very important for cutting wood and cutting other things that are not wood. There we go. This one comes with a bunch of other tools mixed in. You got some wrenches here. I'm not entirely sure what you might use those for in this scenario, but you never know. It's always good to have it. You also have a hammer side there, which is also good to have. You can bang in tent stakes. I imagine you could tenderize meat. I wouldn't, but you could. I'm just I'm just thinking of stuff you could do with this. But this one's paracord wrapped on the handle, which is very convenient. You gotta have as much paracord as you can find. Speaking of, I think I have some paracord around here. Paracord, pack as much as you can. This particular pack is, where is it written? Ah, 50 feet of utility paracord. Doesn't matter what color. But the point of having the paracord is it's a universal tool. You can use this for lots of different things, building a shelter, first aid, creating a trap, whatever comes to mind where you might need a ropey kind of thing. Flashlights, also very important, as I'm sure you're aware. And this one I actually will unbox because it'd be kind of a good idea for you to see what it is you're getting here. This particular flashlight is from Phoenix. It's 1600 lumens, the PD36R. Extra long lasting battery. This thing can go for almost two, nope, almost three hours on the full power setting of 1600 lumens. So with this one, you get a, let's get that out of here. You get a pocket clip that goes in two directions. So you can mount it tip up or tip down, up to you. The battery life indicator is here. So when you turn the flashlight on, it'll be red or green or yellow, depending on the battery life. It charges with USB type C, which is what most of y'all have these days. So that's very convenient. You can just use your phone charger. If you don't have a phone charger handy, it comes with one. So you don't need to worry about that. Power buttons on the back. I'm not gonna turn it on because that would be obnoxious. It also comes with a sheath and a wrist strap. So you can put it on your belt or on your wrist or wherever you wanna put it. But you don't just have to carry this, you can get creative with it. A lot of backpacks have a strap that's right here, so you can kind of just put it there. Multi-tools are excellent to have as well, and this is the Leatherman Free P4. The name of the game with these is one-handed opening. You can just butterfly it open. All you have to do is separate it a bit with your fingers. Everything is magnets. I quite like magnets. You have a pocket clip on this side and a sheath in the box if you're more of a sheath kind of person. All the tools are accessible from the outside, except for the pliers, obviously, and all you do is open it with your thumb the same way you would any other kind of knife. And then there's a little lock right there that you move with your thumb to close it back up. And the same thing applies to the standard tools that are not the bigger ones. So you just push your thumb down, select a tool. Let's say I want to open a can. Now I can do that. And then I just fold it up again. This isn't a feature per se, but it's really addicting to just like flip it around. While the Leatherman P4 and other multi-tools have a blade in them, it's always important to have a single blade as well separately. And I recommend the Carson M16 from CRKT. Very well balanced, you got a Tonto edge there. A plain edge blade, you can get it serrated if you like. I typically like to keep my single blade clean. You have a tight pocket clip there, kind of shallow. I prefer it that way. This is a liner lock, but there's no springs or anything, so it's really easy to just open and shut with one hand. Two more important tools. We got this shovel. Now you've probably seen this shovel before, and if you haven't, I'll explain how it works. It's kind of looking not so useful right now, but that's okay, all you gotta do is unfold it here, unfold it there, 
Unfold it one more time and then screw this ring all the way up to the base there. And now you have a very sturdy trowel. Lastly, for self-defense, I recommend pepper spray or in this case, pepper gel. Pepper gel is a thicker substance. It's less likely to blow back in your face. They'll both be excellent for fending off attackers. As for communication, there's a couple of things that you'll need there. Your cell phone, which I'm sure you already have with you, but you're not gonna necessarily have a way to charge it. So a solar charger is usually a great plan with a battery bank built in. So you can strap that to your backpack, it'll charge throughout the day, and you'll be able to get power that way. Now, cell phones aside, a radio is also very important so you can stay up to date with current events. This one from Rothko has three ways of powering it, believe it or not. You got your hand crank here, your solar panels up here, and there is an AC adapter here if you do find yourself in a place where you can plug this in. There's also a power out port over here so you can charge your phone with this as well. Charging it up with the hand crank is very simple. You just take the hand crank out, make sure your fingers are very much clear of the crank. If they're not, you'll know soon enough. And you just do one of these numbers. It sounds very weird, but don't worry about it because this is powering up your device. Sounds like somebody's swinging a cat around on a rope. And there you have it, miscellaneous items. That's such a fun word, miscellaneous. So many syllables and, and consonants. Anyway, compasses. The compass is invaluable to keep with you when navigating your environment. You'll wanna find a local area map to use it with and you can find those at any gas station. Emergency whistle, very loud, very shrill, and very sure to keep you safe and found when you get lost in the woods. Camouflage face paint is also useful for when you want to really disappear. There's five colors in this pack and a mirror, so if you don't already have a signal mirror, now you have one. You may have noticed I waited to talk about the bag until the very end, and that's because you ought not to buy your bag until you have the stuff going in it. That way you know how big it needs to be. The stuff in this video should comfortably fit in this fox bag right here, which you might have seen before in the Molly video. You can strap stuff to the sides, which you'll definitely need to. There's plenty of room on the inside, a lot of different pockets, and obviously Molly loops. So if for some reason you find you don't have enough room in the bag, you can get little smaller bags to put on the outside. You've got some nice back padding here for ventilation and comfort. You also have this chest strap, and that's important for keeping the whole bag stable while you're wearing it. You also have hip supports. Those are crucial because your hips can carry a lot more weight than your arms and your back can. So if you transfer a lot of the weight of the pack to your hips, you're much better off. Well folks, that about does it for today's video. You can find all the items in the video at www.harrysarmysurplus.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Actually, yeah, no, that can't be right. That's, I'll, I assure you there's a right way to do this. This isn't it, but when you do it right, it looks good. Anyway, if you like this video, subscribe and make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you get notified whenever we upload a new video.